Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at smart tags once again, but more specifically, bolding only a portion of smart tags, which if you've ever made a smart tag family before, you'd have to have multiple labels within that entire tag, one that is bold and one that is not to get this to work. So, but I have a workaround for you. But before we get into it, if at any point in this video you haven't learned something, please demolish that like button. Really helps me out quite a lot. Okay. When we look at tags, I have a section detail here, and there's nothing special about this section detail. We don't need to worry about what's in it or anything other than the fact that we have cold form metal framing. And we want to say refer to structural, and we want to show the spec section. So that's that's very important. So this is the spec section for cold form metal framing. Uh, we're pointing to it there in that section. And what we're looking at is I have three different ways that you're probably used to uh, tagging this or let's say noting this specific element within a wall section, obviously a very common element. And in this case we have text. So if I click on this, uh, th there's nothing special about it. It's text, whatever, and I can do anything that I want. I can, I can put the spec section where I want, whether it's at the front or the back, I can select this portion and bold it. Um, so that's primarily what we're going to look at within this video. And the fact that we want to bold a portion of a smart tag uh, but obviously not all of it. In this case, let's say we wanted to bold the spec section. And so here we go as an example of the text. This is what we essentially want it to look like. And now I will say I have decided that it's best for me to put the spec section at the beginning. And so I want to, I want to first show it to you at the end and then let's move it to the beginning. And the reason for that is uh, we I always wanted to have a specific location for where uh, this probably the most prime information for the specific node is because all the information of what this element is, is located in that spec section. And it's nice to have all of those labeled aligned there at the left. And then you can have a, a ton of text and information, extra notes after that, that wrap uh, independently of where the spec section is. And in this case, I want to bolt that. So in this case, let's go ahead and put it here at the front. I'll cut this here and paste this uh, at the beginning because, in fact, I do want to see all of that information at the front. And we can decide later on how we want to split it up, but uh, that's pretty good. I don't, obviously don't need this comma, but uh, this is uh, basically a precedent of what we want to achieve from our smart tag. And so <laughs> if you've tried to build this with just one label and a smart tag, um, it's not going to happen. And so in a sense, we're doing that, but we're not doing that. And so I will show you that specific workaround. So again, this is just the text that we want, obviously from a smart tag, but we don't want to have to use text. That's the whole point of using a smart tag. And so moving down here, we see we have uh, the exact same information in a note. If I click on this, we can see uh, the elements that I have here I have are type comments, uh, which is literally the the text, the information, the note that I want to point out what this element is, of course, but then the description I have decided to use for the spec section. Traditionally, this is not how I've done it. I have made a new parameter that is a shared parameter because it is a tag, but for the sake of this video and simplicity purposes, uh, I've used the description. And so you'll find this information if I click on this element. You'll find this here uh, within the type comments right there. And if I wanted to put my spec section, I'd put that in the description exactly right there. And so that, that looks great. That's perfectly fine. I'll press okay. And we can click it and see it there. So obviously this is the exact same tag right now, but we will edit that in just one moment. So we can see it here, but you know, how would we move it to the front? Well, again, we got to go back into the tag. Um, but that's very simple. We can see my tag here. There, there's really nothing special about the tag, uh, other than the parameters that it's using. So let's go ahead and edit this tag. And I first want to move this to the front. So let's look at this label edit the label and again i'm using type comments and, and the description um, but the thing to worry about is the f the easy thing is to just move this up um, but then obviously we're left with this comma if i put this comma here then regardless of whether i end up having any sort of comments or whatever after that let's say i have no comments and i just want to uh, label the spec section well then i can do that uh, but if I have this comma here in the spec section or the description, then no matter what, whether I have an extra comment, uh, I'm labeling 
the note beyond just the spec section, then I will see that comma at the end, and I don't want to see that. So let's remove this comma here, but instead place it here at the prefix of my notes. It will look all the same, but to prove that, let's go ahead and put the comma right there. And I want to make sure that I have one extra space, which is right there. Press OK, and we can see, yeah, there's my comment, or my comma right there. And instead, let's, like I said, let's go ahead and put it in this second uh, type comments prefix. And this will allow us uh, to have that comma only if we have a note right there. So let's press OK. And yeah, we see it right there. That's exactly what I wanted. We need to go ahead and remove uh, that extra space there at the beginning. And it's perfect. That's exactly what I want. And you'll notice whenever I load this in, go ahead and save this. Yes. And we will override it we will see that it moves to the front and it looks the exact same. But what you will see is that <laughs> obviously it is not bolded. We want to come down here and we want to bold it. So how would we do that? Well, I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible, but we are going to edit this family. I'm going to go to file and save as we will save a new one. I've called it detail tag dash bolded. Okay. But again, so there's nothing special about this as far as the difference between the unbolded, the previous detail tag and this one. So nothing yet anyway. So if you remember what I said at the very beginning, we would have to have two different labels normally to achieve this. And, and in fact, we still do. And I, I'm not going to say that I've found a magical way around this, but what I have found is that we can do something a little specific. So if I go to edit type for my label, I can see this is exactly where I would bold it. And so if I, obviously if I bold this, everything is bolded, but I don't want that. That's not, that's not what I want at all, right? Of course. So what's the way around this? Well, uh, it's a bit weird and I just sort of stumbled upon this, uh, but let's actually go ahead and make this unbold it again because we want to have that unbolded because obviously we don't want all the notes and everything to be bolded. Uh, but what is the way around this? Well, let's duplicate this and I will bold this. So we'll basically have a second label that is bolded. So again, nothing special here. Um, now I've got my two different ones. All right. So what I'm going to do is take my unbolded label, which has all my information, I'm going to copy that and then paste that in the exact same place. And so now we have two labels, <laughs> both of which are the exact same type. But now I want to change the second one to bold. The only difference here is that I'm going to select my bolded label, edit that label, and I'm going to just remove all the notes because I only want to see that, in this case, description or spec section bolded. Okay, so what we have now is it, it looks a bit weird. Um, I'll admit that. But for the sake of this, let's go ahead and drag the information for the spec section back to where obviously if we have, we need to make sure we have our amount of characters correct, of course. So now it's just, we're able to distinguish between one label versus the other is really the whole point there. Um, but I'm going to come in here to my original label that is not bolded. You can see it's not bolded there. I'm going to edit the type there. And what I really need to do is just make up this amount of space um, for that is bolded and that's about it. So I'm going to come here to the suffix of the description or the spec section and let's start with two. Two is fine. Um, that's probably too much. So maybe just one is perfectly fine. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I, I seem to have my bold and I've got my type comma. So really let me explain what's happening here. Um, so we basically have the same parameter in two places, whether it's bolded or not, but they're on top of each other. So you're essentially only seeing uh, the bolded version. And so that may or may not be uh, what you want. But in this case, we want to see the spec section bolded. And so because that's on top or it's bolded and it's larger and it's it's bolded, it's going to uh, we're going to receive that spec section and those numbers as bolded. But the nice thing is and the whole purpose of us leaving the original label basically intact is that we have the spec section there populating not bolded but basically it's accounting for the amount of characters um, but we're able to maintain the location of that comma so for example if i come in here to a bolded label and obviously this is just a sample value but there are some spec sections that have extra extra numbers at the end dot xx dot two numbers, right? If I press okay, obviously I need to populate that. So I need to be able to extend that. But the whole idea is that 
this original label will respond to that. And so I, the same parameter is used in two places. So this would also populate right there and it would then move along. And so the, the, the notes would follow the length of the spec section, whether it's one character or as many as this is here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this just because this is kind of the worst case scenario. And let's just see what happens when we load this into our project. Do I want to save this? Sure. We might need to mess with some of the spaces, but it really isn't that big of a deal. So it's loaded in, but I haven't changed this tag yet. So let's go ahead and change this from detail tag to detail tag bolded. And once I do that, you can see well, we're missing some formatting. We have some formatting issues here. So let's go ahead and edit our family here. Uh, what I'm guessing is that because this is wrapping, we need to make sure that our the vertical alignment of our text is on top. So no matter how many lines we make with all of these extra notes, the text is still at the top. And we need to make sure the same is done here with our, our bolded spec section. Make sure that's at the top. Okay, great. I will again load this back in and save it. Yes. Override this and we should see this update. Now look at that. That is essentially, that, that's everything that I wanted. I will just need to fix the arrow and we'll be good. And you can see here, this is exactly what I wanted. But the one issue is I see an extra space here that I wouldn't have expected or wanted to see. Um, and so let's go ahead and fix that. And we can fix that through our unbolded label. We can see here that there is actually an extra space there. So let's get rid of that space. Press OK. You can see that our notes move over. And yet yeah, there is some odd overlap that looks incorrect. But when we load it into our project, it's going to work all the same. And I'll show you that here. We will overwrite this. And with that, we could see ah, it looks right here, but when I have it unselected, I'm basically missing that comma. There's something, there's some weird thing going on. So let's go ahead and fix that. And we can find that actually uh, within the bolded label here. We can go to edit type. And I actually don't want this background to be opaque. And so the fact that it's opaque means that I'm not seeing the note behind it that includes, or the spec section behind it that includes the comma. If you notice, again, in the label, I do not have a comma in my suffix here. So this looks funky again. It looks a bit weird. But just know that based on the number of characters, even with this being bolded versus not, it's going to populate correctly. We're not we're not going 100 characters out to where uh, whether it's bold or not really, really, really starts to matter. You won't even notice it. So go ahead and load this in after we save it. And we can see if we actually get what we want. And we see, look, that's exactly what I want. And... As you hover over it, you could see what's really going on. And you, you can see that, yeah, it's it's one family, it's one tag, but I have essentially two labels going on here. <laughs> um, I, that's not my preference. That's just the way Revit is, Revit is built. Um, that's totally up to you. And so remember that this comma could be anything. Semicolon, dash, like nothing. It could be anything. Um, maybe you want a comma. Maybe you don't want a comma. Um, a lot of times, you probably don't want a comma, but you you need to remove that within the tag. So uh, I'm going to leave that up to you. But in my opinion, this is a decent enough workaround that it does work. And so I will show you here, if we were to add a couple of extra numbers here, like those longer spec sections that have uh, multiple sections there, uh, yes, I want to update this. And look, that everything was stretched appropriately. And we could see that it worked with the smart tag as well because it's pulling from the same description information. So that's exactly what I want. This is great. And so what this allows for is I can set this width for the tag perfectly. I can have all of my sections here at the beginning. So that's very clear lined up. And I can see it easily at the left. I can separate it by a, however I want. It will wrap correctly and I don't have to worry about it wrapping somewhere weird. So the issue I had before was I had the section at the end, which seems like also a logical place to put it. Um, but what happens when something like this occurs like that and it's a tag, so it's a set width that's ridiculous and you know, just unfortunate to have to deal with. So putting the spec section at the beginning is kind of a no brainer and makes perfect sense to do that. So that's exactly why that decision was made. But this is so great down here because not only do I have my smart tag, but it is, it's got the spec section that is bolded. So this is very simple. Again, I'd recommend you do this with shared parameters, but I have yet to create a shared parameters video, which I will do in the very near future, because I know that is, that would be extremely helpful for a ton of people. It would even help me out <laughs> making the video. I promise you. So that will do it for this video. We looked at of course, any sort of text, but specifically looking at smart tags and how we can make both 
bolded and unbolded text and notes with all within one single smart tag. So I really hope this helped. And if it did, or if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Really, really helps me out quite a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does as well. Be on the lookout for new videos coming soon every single week. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching.